Brasilia is a modern city designed by man and in which there is apparently no room for animal life. But our curious naturalist can once again help us understand that in matters of fauna, things are not always what they seem. For example, in college, almost everyone is unaware of the fact that Athena, the goddess of wisdom, lives among the students. Yes, a street community of owls discreetly watches over each and every one of the students during the academic term. With its appearance of an ancient bird, it has been living underneath the campus for a number of years now, and not a movement from its young neighbors escapes its large eyes. They are coruchas buraqueiras, small owls that have found their food, home, and tranquility in this environment modified by man, an academic environment for illustrious animals. These owls live in galleries underneath the lawn, and although they are night birds, they enjoy the Brazilian sun as do the students of this university. Here they feel just as comfortable during the day. They have excavated their nests in the ground like rabbits, where they breed peacefully, away from the matting crowd. That's why their scientific name in Latin is cunicularia, a clear reference to their brother rabbits because of their taste for building tunnels. A zoology student has been following this phenomenon for a number of years. During the past three terms, aside from passing the academic exams, this student inspects each corusha lair, come rain or shine. We have followed and listened. An ornithologist always has new aspects to show us. There are six corusha species here on the college campus. All of them have benefited from a process of destruction of nature and some of them have abandoned the countryside and have settled here, like the Corusha Buraquera. Also because here, close to human beings, they find the food they like, such as rats, bats and birds, in abundance. They feel comfortable here in this environment with no natural enemies. But these feathered balls don't always live a peaceful life. In Corumba, thousands of kilometers away from Brasilia, their presence makes other birds feel uneasy. The Quero Quero, a jealous cold water South American bird, cannot bear the owls and makes life obsessively miserable for them. They don't represent any kind of danger. It simply dislikes them and harasses them with unusual contempt on every occasion it gets. It's about an ancestral territorial struggle in which, like it or not, they are sentenced to reach an understanding. One thing is certain, not only do they have a nest, the Corushas also have a bunker here in the middle of the battlefield. They stole it from an armadillo and have redone it to their liking. They take care of their chicks beneath the ground and don't have to deal with the constant harassment of the rest of the neighborhood. Home sweet home. Brazil has 17 species of coruchas, or small owls, all efficient allies of man because they annually consume millions of insects and small rodents. Some undocumented and superstitious mentor of the history of ideas decided to label them with the unjust name of birds of evil. Yet with their evident beauty, they are essential to the landscape. This is the acuri coconut, the basic food and daily diet of our following guest, a species that will captivate us because of its corpulence, its strength, its capacity for feeding itself, as I've said, from this unique plant, a plant that would make me have second thoughts if my survival depended on it. It's a very difficult task to separate the coconut from the bunch. Besides that, 
If it weren't for a strong beak, it would be impossible. I have a hammer here with me. This hammer is demonstrating in its own way the fact that if we humans needed to feed off this coconut, we would indeed go hungry. Thanks to our cameras, we will see how our winged guest obtained this delicious treat in a matter of seconds. There are few birds in this world as beautiful and imposing. This is the biggest parrot in the winged kingdom, the blue arara. Its beak is larger than its skull, and it is capable of peeling this fruit that is as hard as a stone with the efficiency that we see here, with ease, as we've mentioned earlier. Hammer, knife, and power saw, all in one beak, capable of amputating the finger of whoever dare lay a hand on it. Its tongue is also very special, having 400 more taste buds than any other bird, and with which they can perfectly distinguish between the salty and the sweet, the sour and the bitter. This group of araras knows perfectly well when the fruit of the akori palm tree is ripe, and they've been settled here since early this morning for the harvesting of the sugars and fats that are the main ingredients of this impenetrable seed. It has a mobile and elastic jaw, joined to the skull by a special articulation that permits them to execute extra movements that expand the power of its beaks. Thanks to this sophisticated tool, this breakfast is just as nutritional for them as it is for the palm trees. When they feed, the eratas let the seeds fall open onto the ground, something that could not be achieved otherwise. And this way, the future continues. They are very sociable and never go unnoticed. The araras like to show off. They have very few natural enemies, except for mankind, and they have an acute sense of community living. They like to live coupled up, and when they feel that they have found their other half, they spare neither flattery nor lovey-dovey behavior. giants carry their kilo and a half weight from tree to tree. This watambu moves with the lightness of a hummingbird. They often travel in circles, performing a spectacle that is becoming more infrequent with time because their beauty has been their ruin. They are becoming extinct because they are beautiful. Persecuted by the international animal mafias, the blue araras, also known as the guacamayo jacinto, have been eliminated from many parts of Brazil. In spite of being protected by the government, some stable populations, such as the ones we see here in the state of Mato Grosso, are the objectives of the mafias and the thousands of buyers who wish to see them caged up. We don't. We prefer to see them like this, dancing across the sky freely, a cobalt blue for a peaceful green country.
We have followed them to their hidden nests, a natural hollow in the trunk of a mandubi tree. The couple takes on an aggressive behavior, for there is a treasure hidden in the heart of this tree. Four little chicks, which they jealously protect, introducing their meter-long feathered bodies into this groove in the tree. Although they live in large groups, the couples isolate themselves during the reproduction periods, keeping to themselves. The blue araras remain united to this tree like banners, clinging to life and filling ours with happiness.